Ah, back for more, eh? Hey, everybody, welcome to part two of the TextWipe automation tutorial. Now, in the previous part, we created a matte solid, placed it above our text layer in the composition, and moved its position to the bottom of our text. In this part, we'll animate the position of the text. We'll do it following these steps. We'll identify our text layer as we did in part one. Move the time indicator of the composition one second forward and add a position keyframe at that time. Move the time indicator one second backward and add a position keyframe at that time as well. In the third step, we'll move our text down so it'll be completely hidden behind the matte solid. Ready? Let's get started! Okay, we'll continue our automation by identifying the text layer in our comp. And if you've watched the first part, we'll do the same thing again. We'll add a loop line that'll go through the layers in the active comp. Then we'll add an if inside and ask if the layer is first selected. If it is, we'll ask if it is a text layer too. Now that we've identified our text layer, the first step on our list is done. To complete the next two steps, we need to access two properties. The first one is the time indicator of the composition. To access this time indicator property, we need to access our composition by saving it as a variable. We'll create an item variable and select the containing comp of our layer. I'll rename it to this composition. Now, this part is not necessary because, as you can see, we already have a variable named composition from part one, but we'll create another one just in case you didn't follow part one and don't have it already. Now, the next property we need to access is the Y position of the text layer because we need to animate it. We'll create another variable this time it'll be a property. Select the loop variable which holds our text layer and position Y. This variable will let us access the Y position of the text layer and add keyframes to it. We'll first add the second keyframe of our text animation where the text is in its final position. Let's start by adding a set line and setting the time indicator of the composition to itself plus one second. Run the automation. As you can see, the time indicator moved exactly one second forward in our composition. Uh, just to clarify, the time indicator does not directly determine where we'll add keyframes. But in this situation, it'll help us avoid accidentally placing a keyframe between frames. That's because the time indicator can't move between frames. So, we can use its time to add our keyframes. Next, we'll create a set line that'll set the time property of the position Y variable that we created earlier. This is the value that'll determine the time in which the keyframe will be added. We'll set it to the comp time indicator. If you run it now, guess what? You won't see anything <laughs> because we didn't add a keyframe yet. We just told the automation where we want the keyframe to be added. So, we'll add an action line. Select the position Y variable. And then add key. Next, we can type a custom value for the new keyframe. Uh, let's try 100. Go ahead, run it. It created a keyframe exactly one second forward with a Y position value of 100. Now, this was just an example. The real value we need is the current Y position because it's the final position of our animation. Change it to the loop variable and then position Y. This will set the keyframe value to the current position value of our text layer. Go on, run it again. Good. The keyframe was created and the text is still in the right position. We're almost done with this keyframe. Hang in there. We just need to make it easy ease so the animation will be smoother. 
We'll add a set line and select the position Y variable. And then influence in. Type 66. You can type here any number you want for different results. We'll also set the speed in property to zero so the animation will gradually stop. Run it. Nice. The second step is done. Let's finish this animation by creating the first keyframe. This step is very similar to step 2. The only change is that we'll need to calculate the starting position of the layer so it'll be completely hidden behind the mat. We'll start by moving the time indicator backwards one second. Set the time indicator to itself. Minus 1. Run it. Now the time indicator returns to its original position after step 2. We'll set the time of the position Y variable to the time indicator just like we did in step 2. Now we need to calculate the value of the first keyframe where the text is hidden. Create a number variable. Rename it to key value and time zero as a temporary value. Don't worry, we'll overwrite it on the next line. Add a set line and set this key value variable to the position Y of the loop that contains our text minus the height of the loop. In order to find the starting position of our text layer, we're subtracting its height from the final position. This way, it should move down the exact amount to be completely covered by the matte layer. Now that we have our value, we can add this keyframe too. Add an action line and select the position Y variable. Add key and then select the key value variable and its value. All right, run the automation. Wowzer! <laughs> the animation is almost ready. We need to smooth this keyframe too. So add a set line and select the position Y variable. We'll select the influence out property and type 66. This time we've selected Influence Out because we want to influence the animation that continues forward to the next keyframe, while Influence In affects the animation that leads to the keyframe. So, as a rule, Influence Out is good for the first keyframe and Influence In is for the second. The same thing goes for Speed. We'll set the Speed Out property to zero. Run the automation one last time. And voila! We're done! The automation is finished. This automation may seem quite complicated, but it can be pushed further in many different ways. You can change the direction and duration of the transition. Create a selection window that lets you choose different directions, or even make it work on many layers at once while randomizing the direction for each one. Now, some of you may be asking yourselves, Well, that's great and all, but I'll never be able to create anything like this from scratch. You can just mess around, add lines, and experiment. You'll eventually find what you're looking for. After creating a few simple automations, you'll figure it out and be able to create much more advanced stuff. If you've made a variant of this automation or any other cool automations, I encourage you to share them on our forum so everyone can enjoy them too. As always, please let me know what crazy idea for an automation you have in mind, and maybe we'll create it together in the next video.